So I'm glad to have this opportunity to present our work on gene expression using RNA-seq data. So I think the first question about gene fusion is why gene fusion is important. So back to three decades ago, the first fused gene was discovered uh, from the De Philadelphia chromosome, which is a BCR able fusion gene. And in 2005, this paper, Arthur Chenayan's group, discovered the TMP RSS2 gene fusion in prostate cancer using uh, high throughput sequencing data. This is probably the first data, uh, first study to use uh, sequencing data to identify fusion genes. So in TCGA, we have quality RNA-seq data for so many uh, samples, so which allows us to identify gene fusions with confidence and even at very low frequency. So to do this, we developed a tool called Prada Pipeline for RNA-seq data analysis. So Prada is used to identify gene fusions, but Prada is more than fusion detection. Uh, Prada is composed of four modules, uh, processing module, expression, and QC module, fusion module, and gas module. So the processing module performs some basic uh, operations on RNA-seq data, including uh, read alignment, uh, recalibration, and uh, duplication, removal, and at all. The expression uh, and QC module calculates the RPCAM values and generates uh, the uh, quality control metrics for RNA-seq data set. Fusion module detects all candidate gene fusions using all genes in the genome. And while the gas module is a supervised uh, search module which can detect if a fusion is present in your sample, uh, it's, it's a very quick script to detect gene fusions. So, um, Can you go back to, to, the, to the third slide? No, it does okay, it doesn't work. It's pretty slow. Yeah. Yeah, it's trying it's, to go back. Yeah, it doesn't work. So Probably I screw too quick. Yeah. Yeah, so they can they can control that over there. Uh, the third one, third slide. Okay. So a essential step in Prada is the alignment strategy. We use a multiple tiered alignment strategy, uh, in which we align short reads to both transcriptome and genome. By mapping the reads to transcriptome, we capture all the transcript variants, and by mapping to genome, we capture all the uh, we capture the unannotated transcripts for RNA-seq uh, for, for the RNA data. So, as a uh, as a uh, RNA-seq data analysis pipeline. Prada uses many tools. Uh, uh, the established tools and functions as infrastructure. This shows a detailed diagram of Prada, and we use same tools. Um, uh, we use same tools BWA for alignment. We use same tools PCARD, GATK, and RSXC for the for the RSC quality controls. So. As a, a RNA-seq data analysis pipeline, it's important to output uh, RPCAM values uh, from Prada. So RPCAM value is an estimate for gene expressions from RNA-seq data. So uh, a little memory refresh. So back to 2010, we published a cancer cell paper in which we divide glioblastomas into four types subtypes, which we name proneural, neural, classical, and mesenchymal. So we make this, we made this classification based on array-based data. And right now, since we have the RPCAM values from RNA-seq, 
We want to compare the RNA-seq based classifications with the array based classifications and see how consistent these two metrics give us. So we did this to around 160 samples, and this table shows a comparison results for these 160 samples. So overall, we get a concordance rate more than 80 percent. And considering we divide those samples into core and, and non-core samples, those, for those non-core samples, we cannot un um, ambiguously classify into any of those group, four subtypes. So we have 25% of the samples to be on-call samples. Well, considering that, this uh, concordance threat is pretty high, actually. So uh, for fusion detection, this is the rationale uh, for Prada to detect, detect fusions. Prada uses two, sources of, uh, two lines of evidence. First is discordant read pair, and second is fusion spanning reads. A discordant read pair is a pair of reads in which one end of the read map to gene A and while the other end of the read map to gene B. So if gene A and gene B has a fusion, then we expect to see uh, there are some reads mapping to the junctions, and while the other end of the, uh, of the junction spanning reads map to either gene A or gene B. So in Prada, we require um, both evidences to call a fusion candidate, and like many other uh, fusion detection tools. So a important issue in uh, fusion detection is false positives. So in Prada, we have uh, many filters to filter out those false positives. And number one filter is we require that the gene pattern in a fusion cannot have a significant sequence similarity. So we call this homology filter. We also require the ratio of fusion spanning reads and uh, the discordant read pairs, the number of the ratio cannot, should be wi within a limit, and which is determined by the library size and the read length. We also look at gene patterns and, and junction patterns and other things from the, from the fusion ident identification. So we, pro we applied Prada to kidney cancer and glioblastoma, uh, and we identified recurrent fusions uh, which uh, includes SFPQ TFE3 fusion uh, in kidney cancer, FGFR TAC gene fusion in glioblastoma, also TFG and GPR128 fusion um, in both cancer types, which I will discuss uh, in the next coming slides. So in kidney cancer, we identified 80 fusions in about 15% of the, of the cohort. So the most frequent uh, fusion is F SFPQ and TFE3 gene fusion, which occurs in five samples. The second recurrent fusion is TFG and the GP, uh, GPR128, uh, which occurs in four samples. So interestingly, TFE3 translocation has been reported to, re to associate with a rare subtype of adult kidney cancer. Uh, so to, to evaluate uh, the accuracy of Prada, so we uh, selected 13 fusions and we used RT-PCR uh, to validate at least 11 out of these 13. So uh, we also validate the fusion identification in glioblastoma, which we had a, a comparable validation rate. So we use uh, whole genome sequencing data in, in glioblastoma to, uh, to uh, validate the, our, our fusions. So in glioblastoma, we identified in a total of 232 fusions in about around 70% 70, uh, 70 of, the, of the samples. So the, the recurrent fusions include FGFR, TAC gene fusion, uh, TFG, GPR uh, fusion, and EGFR involved fusions. So these fusions are, are important because, for example, the FGFR and TAC gene fusion was reported in science by Singh et al. in July. And they show, by experiment, they show this fusion is transforming fusion in astrocytes. And TFG GPR fusion is interesting because we thought this fusion in both kidney cancer and brain tumor. And EGFR fusion is important, certainly, because EGFR gene is important in glioblastoma. 
So since we have the data from both kidney cancer and, and, uh, and glioblastoma, so we think we, maybe we can do a li some you know, pan cancer analysis. So the first thing we look at is uh, the fusion distance, the distance between two fusion genes in both cancer types. So this shows, uh, the, the first bar shows, uh, uh, the first three bars showed uh, the intrachromosome uh, fusion distance, and the last bar shows the interchromosome. Um, so we can see uh, for both glioblastoma and kidney cancer, you actually, uh, we actually find more uh, short distance fusions where these two fusion partners has a distance less than one megabasis. So uh, TFG GPR fusion, so we saw this fusion in both kidney cancer and, and brain tumor. And, and, th and then we went back to uh, see the copy number profiles of those fusions. And this figure shows a screenshot of the IGV, IGV screenshot of the copy number profiles. And you can see each row here, each line is, is one patient. And you can see almost all of the patients with this fusion, they have a very focal amplification on this locus. So this fusion is actually caused by a focal amplification and a inversion. And this pattern is not only present in kidney cancer and, and brain tumor, it's also, uh, it was also found in some other cancer types. And most interestingly, it was found in healthy individuals. So suggesting this is a germline event. So this give the, uh, gives us a reason to, uh, to, to look at this fusion in normal uh, samples in TCGA. So to do this, we developed a tool called GASFT. So GASFT, like I mentioned, GASFT is a method to supervise search uh, fusion uh, in, a, in rna seq data. So we use GASFT to all cancer types, to all normal, uh, to all the uh, fusions and the mesh normals. In all cases, if we found this fusion in a, okay, in, a, in, in a tumor, then we found this fusion in the mesh normal. So this result shows this fusion is a germline event. Um, looking at the gene expression pattern, this fusion can activate the expression of GPR-128. Um, so, I mentioned EGFR uh, a few slides ago in glioblastoma, and the most common mutation uh, in EGFR in glioblastoma is uh, the V3 mutation, where uh, EGFR loses exon 227. So uh, consequently, uh, there is a rearrangement between exon 1 and 8. Uh, this, this kind of rearrangement is different from gene-gene fusion because this is an intergenic event. Um, so, and, and this, this kind of intergenic event cannot be detected by the, by the common uh, fusion detection tools. So uh, to, to find this, we uh, developed a tool called GAS-IG, uh, GAS for intergenic rearrangement. So we apply this GAS-IG uh, to RNA-seq data in glioblastoma. We found V3, we found C-terminal deletions, and most surprisingly, we found exon 12 to 13 deletion and uh, exon uh, 14 to 15 deletion. So those two kinds of deletion has not been functionally characterized. Uh, to summarize, Prada has several highlights. So it provides powerful functions in processing RNA-seq data. And it can be used as a standalone version or it can be used within a PBS or SFS, uh, LSF system. Uh, it has a modular design so we, as users, can actually flex, flexibly use uh, Prada. You can pause, or you can resume your analysis, or you can just select to, to run individual modules in, in, uh, among all of the four modules. So we, uh, because considering the, the number of samples we are handling, so we actually design Prada to run samples in batch. Uh, for example, we run around 180 samples in two weeks. So right now, Prada is available in SourceForge. So finally, I want to thank uh, all the people involved in this project. Prada was developed in Verhack Lab. In particular, I would like to thank uh, Wanda Torres Garcia and Rahul Vagasana for 
their enormous contribution to this project. I also want to thank uh, collaborators within MD Anderson and out of MD Anderson. Michael Berger from uh, MSKCC, Andrew Schwachinko and Getty Gass from Broad Institute. Also, this project uh, benefits from uh, uh, TCG Kinney Working Group and, and GBM Working Group. Thank you. We have time for one quick question, one quick answer. Just wondering if you can comment more on the uh, very interesting finding of the Exxon 1213 and 1415 uh, uh, deletions. Um, do you see so you see both? Uh, do you see both uh, DNA-based and transcript-based evidence for uh, these deletions? Well. From our data, we see this deletion from uh, on the, uh, in the in the transcripts because we use RNA seq data. But uh, using uh, we, uh, I don't remember if we see this in DNA. Okay. But so we, probably I, because I, this is too short. We we could so not we, see. You, we can see these in uh, sequencing. We've actually seen these in sequencing data. We have some uh, single cell sequencing data where we've seen. Um, yeah, that's, that that uh, would be great. These, and I would love to follow up with you on this. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you.